Lake, this is Edwards Air Force Base. We're tracking an object that's entered the atmosphere above your airspace. Altitude 180,000 feet, velocity 10,250 miles per hour, no transponder. Can you confirm? Roger, Edwards, we have the object, no transponder. Azimuth 105 degrees, elevation 49 degrees, range 40 miles. Detecting pulse radar at 1,000 megahertz. Roger, China Lake. The object is decelerating rapidly now at 2,100 feet per second. Can you identify? Uh, negative, Edwards. Unable to get an image match. Infrared is detecting three new heat sources, possibly rocket engines. Roger, China Lake. We're checking to see if it might be a Soviet spacecraft that's gone off course. Roger. Whatever it is, she's really putting on the brakes. Detecting Doppler radar continuous wave at 13,000 megahertz. Uh, Roger, China Lake. We're about to lose it below the horizon. Can you calculate a point of impact? Roger, Edwards. Looks like she's coming down just to the east of us inside the Fort Irwin Military Reservation. Roger, China Lake. We're standing by to assist. Roger, Edwards. We'll see what Fort Irwin wants to do. Fort Irwin, Defense Command. This is China Lake Radar Control. Go ahead, China Lake. An unidentified object has gone down inside your airspace. Approximately 117 degrees, 10 minutes, 18 seconds longitude by 35 degrees, 29 minutes, 7 seconds latitude. Roger, China Lake. We spotted the object moments before impact and have scrambled the chopper. Viking 2, Lander. Viking 2? Yeah, the one sent to Utopia Planitia. The one they lost contact with back in 1983. What's it doing here? I have no idea. I'm detecting faint radiation signatures, probably plutonium. All right. We need to take it somewhere for radioactive and biological decontamination. Closest place probably that abandoned army chemical weapons testing facility here in Mojave. Well, that'll have to do. Gonna need one hell of a big lead line crate, guys. That's why they pay you the really big bucks. You're going back to Dryden. Might need you to send some equipment over. Why do I have to miss all the fun? Just do it. And send Perquette back. Have him meet me at the Army test facility. All right.
contact the Marlin Magnetics Corporation in Denver. They're the ones who built the lander. Tell them we need all the engineering specs and any information they have relating to its onboard computers. Also contact Dr. Scott at Ames Research. The space biologist? Yeah, but don't tell her what we found. Just do whatever you have to to get her down here ASAP. Okay. China Lake wants to send somebody over to take a look at what we found. They want to know what the billion dollar imaging radar was unable to identify. Right. That's all I need. I want to know what's so goddamn important you couldn't wait for me to finish my lunch. Hello, Grisha. Don't hello me. This isn't a social call. What the hell do you want? I need your help. My help? Since when? Today, possibly. Come with me. I've got something I want to show you. ID and micro dot. What's a micro dot? See that tiny square? Uh -huh. On it, there are 10,000 signatures of everyone who helped build Viking. You're not suggesting it somehow came back from Mars. That's technologically impossible. I know that. But China Lake tracked it on radar as it entered the atmosphere. We recovered it this morning near Goldstone, where it soft landed in the desert. It's got to be some kind of incredible hoax. How can we be certain? Okay, it hasn't been through decontamination. It hasn't. It's just as we found it. Then I can run an analysis on the dust particles they find on the exterior. That'll tell us where it has or hasn't been. I was hoping you'd say that. I don't know why I bother to waste my time with you. Look at this. Damn, I hate working in these things. Ha, ha. It's okay. Probably a computer subroutine to try and reestablish contact. With whom? Well, typically it's Orbiter. Can't you shut it down? No, it's running on batteries. Charged by nuclear power. Oh, wonderful. We're waiting for engineering specs before attempting to power it down. Okay, this should be enough. It'll take me a few hours to run the analysis. Thanks. When I'm through, I expect a chopper waiting on that launch pad ready to take me away from here. If that's what you want. That's what I want. Starting decontamination sequence. Where's Dr. Scott? He's still running the biology experiments. All of this is for Marlin Magnetics? Yeah, they have over 500 crates of Viking data. Check that out. OK. It seems that there were six landers built back in the early 70s. The two flight articles went to Mars. The two backups are at the Smithsonian and Langley. 
The fifth is on display at the Cape, but the sixth, a non-flight article, is unaccounted for. So you think ours is the sixth? Well, yeah, it would make sense. You're forgetting one thing. Our lander was tracked by a very sophisticated radar defense system as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. One just thrown in the back of an old truck and hauled that into the desert. Well, I know that. But uh, somebody has gone to a great deal of trouble to rebuild a lander and launch it into orbit. I mean, it, it just seems more logical to assume that it was done from a terrestrial point rather than sent back from Mars by an extraterrestrial intelligence. Why? You don't think that's possible? Me? No, 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 I don't. So, why would anybody on Earth go to all the trouble and expense of rebuilding an old lander, launching it into space, just so it could land in the California desert? What's there to be gained by that? I don't know. Maybe just to mess with us. But, but I mean, seriously, if an alien intelligence wanted to study us, wouldn't it make more sense that they would send one of their own probes rather than rely on our derelict space technology? It would, unless we gave them the technology. Chase, we're on our way. I ran our sample through the X-ray fluorescent spectrometer, and then I went back and compared it to the data sent back by Lander 2 from Utopia Planitia. Guess what? They're the same. Not just the same. Neither sample showed a single molecule of organic carbon compounds and not a trace of microbial life. None whatsoever. Then you believe our lander has been on Mars? <laughs> uh, as impossible as that sounds, yes. Jesus, you realize what you're saying, don't you? Yeah. We're talking about extraterrestrial intervention. Why? I don't know. That's what we have to find out. Still want that chopper ride home? Drop dead, are you kidding? As you can see, it's built on a triangular base. Three landing legs, three terminal descent hydrazine engines. That's the S-band high-gain parabolic antenna, which was the direct link to the deep space network out at Goldstone. The sampling arm is on a furlable boom, which reaches up to 10 feet. Two cameras for stereoscopic vision and a meteorology boom for monitoring the weather. Biology processor, gas chromograph mass spectrometer for detecting the presence of carbon-based microorganisms. Uh, that's the S-band low gain antenna, VHF antenna, radar altimeter, seismometer, magnifying mirror, and Camera test grid. Everything seems to be in place. Oh, that's one of two radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, uh, which are fueled by plutonium-238. The, the RTGs give off a whopping 70 watts of power, which trickle charge the main batteries, which in turn power the science experiments, the computers, everything. That isn't part of Viking. What? That, that isn't part of Viking. Look at it. There should be a second hydrazine fuel tank and RTG on this side. It looks like some kind of uh, housing. Maybe the, the lander was damaged and, and, and someone or something repaired it. Maybe there's some reference to the modification in the lander's programming. I mean, whoever sent it back had to have altered the guidance control and sequencing computer to get it to land, right? How difficult is it to access the onboard computer? It's not. It, it's got an I.O. port. Sir, being tested. And who's conducting those tests? Doctors Montgomery and Scott, sir. Gracious Scott. The one and only. Ask them to meet me for a debriefing right away. Right away, sir. Good. You know, if this works. This works, I know. We may be able to learn something 
without whatever sent it back to us. Its onboard computer is divided into two subcomputers having plated wire memories, each having an 18,000 word storage capacity. Got it. Now my son's Nintendo has more memory than that. Case, we're being watched. It's all right, we're shielded lab, even if it is taking pictures. Nothing can be transmitted in or out of this room. Lander is completely cut off from outside contact. Oh, you think so? <laughs> Doctors Montgomery and Scott report to the conference room for debriefing. Tell them we're busy. Can it wait? No, sir. We got company. And you're to come at once. All right, we're on our way. I better go see what they want. I'll stay here and try and access Viking. Oh, no, you don't. We want to be here when that happens. It's after midnight. Go home. Get some sleep. Start fresh in the morning. What the hell's going on? I don't know. Are you, are you sure you don't want me to stay? No, that's all right. I'll see you in the morning. is going on? Who are these people? Dr. Scott. What is he doing here? I'm sorry, doctors. The vehicle's being moved to another location. By whose authority? By the highest authority, I assure you. You can't do that. Why does it have to be moved? Because we need to determine who sent it and why it's come back to Earth. We can do that here, and we will be more than happy to share any information that we find. No, that's why we're not going to allow you to continue. You're trying to squelch this whole thing, aren't you? Make it seem like it never happened. You're going to bury it. Ma'am, that spacecraft may contain information that placed in the wrong hands could be detrimental to the national security of the United States. Save your Cold War speech for the politicians. All right. Let me put it to you another way. We don't believe those landing coordinates were a mistake, nor were they selected at random. For whatever reason, that vehicle land is smack dab in the middle of a highly restricted military reservation. Wait, wait. You think that Viking was sent back to spy on the military? Colonel, if you're really concerned about spies, I suggest you start looking for another spacecraft. Most likely Viking Orbiter. Viking always worked in teams. The purpose of Viking was to look for signs of life. Now, just maybe, life has found it and sent it back to us. It's a messenger, for Christ's sake, not a goddamn Trojan horse. I suppose that message is a warning to humans not to go any further in their space explorations. A warning to the military of the most powerful nation on Earth to beware. Colonel, you've been reading too many comic books. I'm sorry, doctors. This project is now under the jurisdiction of the Department of Defense and has been classified top secret. You can't do that. It's done. The vehicle is to be moved immediately, and you no further access to it. Damn you, Pratt. You are not going to get away with this. Ray, shut up. We can't let them do this. They'll bury it so deep, not even the National Enquirer will hear about it. There seem to be much we can do about that. Thanks. Checking the lander, but maybe we won't have to. What do you have in mind? An image dump. By interfacing the two computers, we should be able to take a picture of the lander programming, copy it onto the NASA mainframe where we can analyze it later. We don't have a lot of time. Hopefully, we won't need much. Seems to be locked from the inside, sir. Who's in there, Private? I believe it's Dr. Scott, sir. All right, image dumped is now in process. Is there any other way in there? No, sir. Find a way to cut it down. Yes, sir. Something blocking the image dump. What in the hell? What is that? 
the lander's computers. The lander's computer is trying to take an image dump of the NASA mainframe. What? That's all we need to do the computer virus invading the NASA mainframe. All right. Everything's okay. Got to be another way to access the Viking's computer without it taking over our system. Open the door, Dr. Scott! Turn on! Cut the damn door down. Yes, sir. Do you hear that? Not at the door. Over here. There's something in there. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's trying to get out. We gotta get out of here. We can't. If we open that door, we can jam it in the whole building. No! You must not enter the lab! You must not enter the lab! Or the lander. What? Just help us find it. <laughs> Damn it, where did it go? I don't know. We gotta find it. No. Not until you tell me what's going on. I'll tell you what's going on. You just let a potentially dangerous exobiological life form out of quarantine, and now the entire building has been exposed. Lady, you and you have jeopardized not only everyone in this building, but the entire nation because of your casual disregard of an executive order. Now I gotta catch something. You can't even tell me what it looks like. Another indulgent scientist, huh? What'd you say about your Trojan horse, Doctor? You don't seem to get it. No, Doctor, you don't seem to get it. If an alien virus transmitted by that thing should get into the populace, it could wipe us out. We would have no immunity. You talk about a risk to national security. Well, pal, you just inherited the big one. This building and everyone in it must be sealed and placed in quarantine. No one must be allowed to get in or out of here. Building is secure. Quarantine markers are in place. Roger, you know your orders. No, Shoot I, anyone who tries to get in or out of here. But that's, yes, sir. that's not the problem. Does that include officers? Including officers. Affirmative, including officers. I don't care what time it is. Just get that quarantine facility ready. Well, that's that. Well, that's not my problem, darling. I got a dozen patients in an exobiological life form that will need to be transported. That's right, exobiological. Right. Why would I be joking? I gotta pee. Got those blueprints, sir? We are right here. Tango 1 to Tango 6, what's your position? Outside the biology lab. No sign of the creature. One Tango out. Above the ceiling in the women's john. All teams in the women's restroom near the conference area. On the double. Stand down, then. You want it alive? Yes, sir.
You all right? They're in shock. It's almost like they were hit with a taser. You must have a defense mechanism like an electric eel. Did you see this? It's like a melt. Or a bite. Let's get them all down to the bio lab, then I can have a full split test. Lieutenant! Sergeant! Get in here and help me with these men. This thing is somewhere up above the drop ceiling. I need you to find it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what was it doing in the toilet, lady? Get the drink or take it away. It may have been trying to escape. Now we have to close up the sewer and drain pipes. That means no toilet, sinks, running water. No, we need to shut off all outside air vents, air conditioners, rooftop circulators, everything. I will no longer put my men at risk trying to capture this thing alive. From now on, they have my permission to kill. You just find it. Let me worry about capturing it. A bit same manner, Doc. Make house calls. I'm not much into curing. I'm more into dissecting. Sounds like fun. had to sustain its life this frigid months in outer space. What do you think it is? Some sort of a suspended animation chamber? Thank you, Peter. What is that? A cocoon? Frickin' Jeffers. So, since the offspring was about the size of a human fetus when it hatched, I have high hopes that an adult wouldn't be any bigger than us. Yeah, unless it has the metabolism of a dinosaur. Remember, their eggs were pretty small for their size. But I don't get it. Why send an egg? It obviously survived the trip. I mean, it made it through 12 months of cosmic radiation, zero gravity, the minus 273 degrees of outer space. Yeah, but a newborn wouldn't even know what its purpose was. And without others of its kind to teach it, there wouldn't be any way for it to learn. Right. Unless... Wait, wait. Unless it were like an insect. They have their intelligence pre-programmed into their memory through DNA. What the frick is that? There isn't even any way to know if this is the offspring of whatever intelligence is responsible for returning Viking. I mean, maybe they sent some other life form to clean house before their planned arrival. That's why we need it alive. We don't know anything about it. Dr. Scott, this is Ryan. It looks like a cocoon. Where are you? We're in Corridor C, outside of the electronics lab. We're on our way. It's growing pretty fast. Yep. It's only been a couple of hours. We better find it. Well, it should be easier to find now than bigger. Fewer places for it to hide. Anyone been in here? Not us. 
Something has. All clear. That's my computer. Look at this. It's building something. What are you saying, Doctor, about intelligence being passed down through DNA? Our friend seems to know a great deal. You know, I think this life form could have 100% race memory. Race memory? Yeah, that's when an offspring is born with the complete intellect, knowledge, and past life memories of its parents and its ancestors. Scary thought. This creature being the sum total of all that came before it. Yeah. There's some big advantages, though. I mean, it wouldn't spend half its life playing catch up, learning the stuff that others of its kind already knew. Perfect intellectual evolution. And if it's as smart as I think, I guess here's our friend is up to something. Wait, if you could turn off the power. What do you think he's up to? I wish I knew. Six Tango, this is One Tango. The power's down all over the building. Roger, One Tango. We're on it. Over. Power grid's in the basement, sir. Private, you're with me. Me, sir. You heard me. Let's go. Yes, sir. Careful, Lieutenant. Boy, man, don't you have your son of a bitch killed the lieutenant? We don't know what happened. He's been shot. I know that the creature's been here too. You smell the sulfur? Look at this. The gunpowder's been removed. Same with these. Why? Why would it be removing the gunpowder? I don't know. Maybe it's collecting it to build an explosive. Let's get the hell out of here. What do we do with him? We can't just leave him here. Okay. Let's go. What 
What happened, Ryan? You better ask Jeffers, sir. Dr. Montgomery, I'm the commander here. I'm the commanding officer of these young men. Now, if you and Dr. Scott feel you can stand up to the United States military and the President of the United States, and you be my guest. In the meantime, I'm exercising my authority to destroy your little pet before it destroys the rest of us. Now, you relate that to Dr. Scott. You understand me? Yes, sir. I want to speak to Jeffers. Yeah, where is Jeffers? I thought he was with you. Sergeant Lopez, find Jeffers. Wait. Everybody listen. This thing has been tampering with the power. It's built something in the electronics lab, and now it's taking gunpowder out of shell casings. Gunpowder? Yeah. Ryan thinks it may be building some kind of explosive device. If he's right, given enough time, it might figure a way to blast itself out of here. So how smart is this thing? Very. I'm getting smarter every minute. Sergeant Lopez, fine, Jeffers. Let's go. Ryan, help me with the lieutenant. It's silicone-based life. No wonder Viking couldn't find any trace of it. Is that possible? Hey, if I were God, carbon-based life forms would have been my second choice. I mean, there wouldn't be any aging or cell deterioration, just progression and evolution. If I remember my Bible correctly, humans gave up immortality when they ate of the apple, except for maybe dentures and silicone breast implants. <laughs> Some very bad news. Lieutenant Angstrom is dead. Oh, God, how? We found him in the basement. I think maybe Jeffers saw the creature and lost it the way he did in the bathroom. He probably shot him by accident. Where's Jeffers now? I don't know. Brad has his men looking for him. Listen, I want to see if we can modify these spectrum analyzers to detect sulfur. I smelled it where we found the lieutenant. Maybe that'll help us find this thing before somebody else gets hurt or killed. This thing is not a monster. It's a visitor. Are you defending it? No, I'm just... I'm looking at the big picture. I don't think the Kremlin's men can see the big picture. They're the ones out there risking their life to find this thing. And when they do, will they have the wisdom to realize they're dealing with an alien intelligence, a, a sentient being from another world who's come a very long way with a specific purpose? Purpose we'll never know if we just kill it. I mean, we have to give it the benefit of the doubt and try to communicate with it. We may not get that chance. Listen, we already know it's been building something in the electronics lab, and that we find out is taking gunpowder out of shell casings, which it may be planning to use to blast its way out of here. And I'm sure you will agree that any contact with the outside world by this alien life form could be catastrophic. Just can't let that happen. I think you're wrong about the gunpowder. Why? Gunpowder is basically carbon, potassium, and sulfur. Right. You smelled sulfur where the lieutenant was killed. Yeah. The gas that came out of the lander was hydrogen sulfide. H2S? A water sample I took from the toilet showed trace levels of sulfuric acid. H2SO4. Add a little lead to the equation. And you get, what, a lead acid battery? Mine was hit by a jolt of electricity. Well, maybe it was consuming the gunpowder for the sulfur? Which, when combined with the other elements, would, in theory, allow some organ within the life form's body to collect and store electricity. Well, maybe it wasn't tampering with the building's power supply. It may have been feeding on it. Scott, this is Ryan. Ryan, what is it? 
Um, we found Jeffers by, by the east exit. He looks real sick. He might have been contaminated. I'm on my way. We've all been exposed to a certain extent. But these suits might buy us some time while I run my tests. Let's get him out of here. Mm -mm. We're not touching him. Oh, come on, guys. You've already been exposed. Yeah, well, forget this. I'm not taking any chances. Hey, Talbot Hawkins, come on, get back here. That's how we're all going to end up. I don't know. What's been here? Should we just get the hell out of here? You have much experience? A little. I'm glad one of us does. He's burning up. I need to draw some blood. Just hold down this button when you want to take a reading. Sweep it slowly back and forth. Sometimes it takes a second for it to register. If you don't get a sound, it's all clear. Yes, sir. I want a systematic sweep of this entire building. I want this thing getting past you. No heroics. We find it, corner it, and then we eliminate it. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Two teams. Let's go. Why do you think this thing has come here? I don't know. Mars is a dying planet, has been for 100,000 years. And then one day we send it Viking. Maybe that was all the technology it needed to escape its dying world and come to Earth. Do you think it's an invasion? Of the force of one? No. I'd like to think it came here looking for answers inspired by Viking's original programming. Which just may hold the answer we're looking for. If they find it, call me in the Viking lab by phone, extension 478. Can't be reached by radio because of the EMI shield. Intersect at quarter C. Quarter C. Don't let it get past you. Case, they found it. Let's meet them in quarter C. Case, where are you? Thank you. 
churches. Could be anywhere. I think it's returning to the land. Talk has arrived? Yes, sir. It's Colonel Pratt, sir. Colonel, I hope you've got some good news for me. The situation is contained, but the creature had to be exterminated. Yes, sir. One officer was killed, another man down. I don't know, sir. Possibly contamination from the alien. I can't allow this thing to get out of hand. Yes, sir. I understand. Okay. What'd you bring him in here for? Oh, come on, Talbert. Shut up. He needs to be watched, and I need the table to do the autopsy. Before, we already know what killed him. But I don't know what's killing him, do I? Perfect. I'm a goddamn biologist. Decomposing fast. Are you 
You all right? Yeah. Come on, give me a hand. Well, I think I think we're safe to assume that the incubation period is at least 12 months since it took Viking that long to get here from Mars. Assume nothing. This thing grew to an adult in less than 24 hours. Yeah, well, right. We have to find a way to retard its growth. Hell, it should be destroyed. I think we've done enough destroying. I mean, God, Case. I don't have to tell you. In the right environment study this life form could be invaluable. This is not a pet that you can raise in a cage. No. It's an intelligence that needs to be treated with some respect. Have you forgotten what this thing can do? What it's capable of or what we have done to it? Because it won't forget. It will remember. What is the point in exploring space if we're going to kill everything we meet? I don't know. But in this case, we have no idea what plans this creature had and its offspring will have the same agenda. Given its intelligence, it could quite possibly become the dominator of the human species. My only concern right now is to isolate the cause of that boy's illness and stop the spread of any possible contamination. Because if I don't, this place will be flat and glowing as far as the eye can see. Wait a minute. How do we know there's not more than one egg? Oh my God. Okay, we know this thing lays eggs. If there are more of them, they could be anywhere. It could have even hatched by now. I don't know. It's no way of knowing it. Sir, why don't we just get out of here and let the F-18 do its business? You know the answer to that. Anyone trying to leave will be shot. If there are more eggs, we better find them. Quick, because... God help us if we don't. Okay, man, you know the plan. I want every single inch of this building checked, okay? Yes, sir. You heard him. Let's go. Hey, um, I'm, I'm Michael Paquette from NASA. I was here yesterday. I'm sorry, sir. I can't let you pass. Why? Why? What's happening? The area is under quarantine. Quarantine? From what? I don't know, but no one's allowed to pass this point. Hey, K Case, it's Michael. Michael, where are you? Um, I'm, I'm outside the gate. They won't let me in. They said they're, that you're under quarantine. Yeah. That mysterious pod attached to the lander. Turned out to be an incubator. Or some kind of an alien life form. What? Which hatched. That's how this in the building. You're kidding. I'm afraid not. So Dr. Scott has us all under quarantine. <sighs> well, wh uh, what about the life form? Is it, is it intelligent? It's dead. We had to kill it. Why? Long story. I'll tell you later. Jesus, I wish, I wish I could be in there to see it. No, you don't. The risk of contamination is very high. Well, um, is there anything I can do? Yeah, I want you to go over to Goldstone and get on the computer. Set up a direct link here to the Viking lab. There's something I want to show you. Okay, cool. Uh, um, I should be up and running in about an hour.
progress report, Doctor. The Jeffers boy is getting worse. I'm trying, Colonel. I know. Find anything interesting? Yes. I can't find a single trace of any microscopic organisms. Humans are codependent on bacteria for survival. We're infested with mites and other parasites. But our visitor here seems to be completely free of any type of symbiotic organism or parasite. Now, at, at first, I thought it was because of the self-sterilizing effect of Martian atmosphere. But then I discovered that it survives purely as a result of chemical reactions within its body. Chemical? Yeah. From its digestion to its ability to store electricity, they're all very simple chemical reactions. And what about diseases and viruses? I can't find any. But they, they may be chemical-based as well. Or they may not even exist. Well, something is making Jeffrey sick. And if I were a physician, I could be a little more forthcoming with my diagnosis. I mean, with the symptoms he's showing and the blood work that I'm doing, for all I know, he could be suffering from a... Wait a minute. What is it? His white blood cell count. It's way off. <gasps> Why didn't I realize it sooner? This illness isn't a reaction to an alien virus. He's having god dang appendicitis. <sighs> what? He's got all the symptoms. Oh, that's great. That is not great. The kid needs an operation or he'll die. Well, then you'll have to do it. <laughs> I am not a surgeon. I know, but you've been in medical school. Oh, no, no, no. That was years ago. I am not qualified. If not you, then who? Oh, God dang it. <laughs> All right. But I'm going to need some help. Under. How's he doing? Is he okay? the memory card from my laptop. This is incredible. This isn't a virus that's put in our computer. It's a data retrieval, translation, and compression utility. Any idea what it was after? God. Looks like everything. Human biological data from Payne's research. Weapons technology from China Lake. Launch vehicle specs from Marshall Space Flight Center. Pathfinder mission specs from JPL. Pathfinder. Yeah, our next mission to Mars. Schedule for launch sometime next year. Right. That's a lot of information for a five meg card. No. No, not on this utility. It, it's got a compression ratio of a billion to one. Any way to kill the program? I don't know. I've tried that. Every time I try to get around it, it does something else. It's almost like like it were alive. Like some kind of biorhythmic algorithm. Well, keep on it. Right. We'll do. Can't take it any longer. Hey, where are you going, man? Anywhere. Wait up. I can't see what I'm doing. 
Yeah, that's right. Clear that. That's it. No, oh, man, you're not going in there. Hell yeah. I want to see it. Besides that thing. Yeah. Still no match 182. Too stupid to know what hit it. Help The freaking hatch, man. The freaking hatch, man. The freaking hatch! Okay, just don't move, don't move, stay still. Downloading is complete. Haste. Haste, it's Paquette at Goldstone. Haste. Nine rounds each. So don't waste your ammo. You can't send for more. It's up to the same old tricks, only this one's smarter than the last one. It knows how the other one died, so watch your backs. Hawkins, go with Case. Hawkins, watch yourself, man. It's here. This is Lopez. Where are you? Come in, tell me. The hell is he? Tumber!
God. Jeez, suffer. Come on. All right, people. Tell me what's going on. Radio. It's here, on this floor somewhere. Probably heading for the Viking lab. Right, stay with you. I'll be right back. Power is still down here.
You stay away from me. You killed them. You killed them. You killed them. We didn't have a choice. They didn't come here to invade us. They came here to stop our invasion of Mars. Yeah, well, let's hope you're right. Because we just detected another lander entering the atmosphere. And we need your help. <laughs> 